It was early 2020. The pandemic has not touched Madrid yet. One day, while having my morning coffee, I got an email from my Google Map timeline that in 2019, I have traveled around 1.4 times around the globe. So I looked back at my travel itineraries and found that I took total of 23 flights and visited all these places, ended up weighing two frequent flyer cards and several travel miles. With all this information in my head, I didn't know whether to feel excited about it or think about how much carbon footprint did I generate? How much actually did I contribute to the global warming? Well, many of you already have felt the same. And then the pandemic happened. Everything slowed down, including the emission of the greenhouse gases. We started living with the virus, and with some special measures and the vaccination, we are slowly coming back to the new normal in terms of our lifestyle, as well as the greenhouse gas emission. In the last year, the CO2 emission globally was about 36 million tons. This is the highest number ever in the human history. And a considerable amount is coming from the transportation sector, particularly the aviation sector, because this still mainly relies on the use of the fossil fuels. As we are fast forwarding our civilization, actually, we are producing more and more greenhouse gases. And if we continue like this, we won't be able to save our planet as well as our own existence in this planet. The solution can be if we can use the renewable energy and we can electrify the transportation sector. So what we can do? We can harvest energy from the sun, wind, or water, store them in a in battery, and then use that for, a transport, for the transportation. In the last decade, we have uh, noticed the launch of several electric vehicles, buses, and this kind of small aircrafts. But surprisingly, none of them are for long haul or the passenger level. The question is why? Let's dig into the problem a little more. Imagine, you have to go somewhere where you need to carry all your clothes, food, drink, all by yourself. If it is for a few days, maybe we can manage. But if it is for a month or more than that, is it going to be possible? What do you think? Well, of course, the answer is no. Actually, the same thing happens if we want to fly with the batteries, where the weight of your luggage is equivalent to the weight of the batteries, and the number of passengers in the, in the aircraft or the distance covered is equivalent to the number of days you are going to spend in the other place. So when the number of passengers or the distance increases, the weight of the battery becomes so high that with this, it almost becomes impossible to fly. For example, in a small electric aircraft like this, over 40% of the dead weight is coming from the batteries and the wearings. And accordingly, if we translate that for a two hours of flight with 100 passengers, it will require about 100,000 kilograms of battery and with which we cannot fly. There is a solution with a budding technology. It's called structural energy storage or massless energy storage. So basically, this is a kind of successful marriage between two very different technologies. Quite difficult, but very productive. So what happens here? One multifunctional component can take care of two things together. One takes care of the structure while the other stores energy. And if we apply this for the electric vehicles, the heavy car panel or the interior of the aircraft can be replaced by a very lightweight multifunctional panel that also can store energy. And this way, we not only can get rid of some of the battery weight, but also get rid of some of the amount of the wearings. 
And as a result, now we have a lighter structure, which has much is less energy requirement and some more space. We have approach to use this, uh, uh, to make this uh, kind of structural multifunctional uh, composite by combining two different components. One is a structural component, which is like a strong carbon fiber or glass fiber. And another is a energy storage uh, device. The energy storage device is a supercapacitor here, which stores more energy than a capacitor, but can charge faster than a battery. We can make a supercapacitor using two electrodes, two metallic current collectors, and a separator containing electrolyte. The device can be assembled in various different forms, like coin cells, cylindrical one, or like a flexible two-dimensional structure. Now to incorporate this energy storage device into a multifunctional panel, we chose such a flexible two-dimensional structure. There are a few more crucial requirements. Now the energy storage device has to store the charge while it is under mechanical stress. And here comes the role of multifunctional material. Because uh, uh, each component of this supercapacitor has to bear some heavy mechanical load. And the carbon nanotubes are such kind of amazing multifunctional material that it has different properties. Actually, these are the cylindrical molecules made up of only carbon, and which is, has uh, a diameter of 10,000 times smaller than our hair, but also can withstand very heavy load. More importantly, this can store energy as well as conduct electricity at the same time. So as a result, now we have a tough electrode and we don't need the current collector. By using two of this kind of carbon nanotube fab fiber fabric and make them in a sandwich, making them in a sandwich structure, we can make this kind of flexible um, supercapacitors without the metallic current collector. Well, now we have the uh, energy storage device, which is a supercapacitor here. If we simply want to implement it for the uh, for the uh, for making the structural composite, then there is a problem because under the mechanical stress, the whole structure won't stay together because the supercapacitor will work as an effective delamination, and it will stop from one layer to transfer the stress to the other layer. So as a solution to this problem, we introduce some glue pockets that will basically act like a rivet and hold the structure together. So after having this supercapacitor with these holes or the glue pockets in them, we buried them under uh, the glass fiber layer, flooded with resin, and after hardening, we have this panel. This multifunctional panel can not only store energy, but also can withstand heavy weight and run for thousands of charge discharge cycle without losing its capacity. This panel can be used as a part of the car or the interior of the aircraft, which will give rise to some mass saving, extra energy, and of course some dead weight avoiding the dead weight from the batteries. By this way, we have combined two very different technologies into one structure. So what is next? Actually, with this demonstration of structural energy storage composite, we have just crossed the threshold for a way to greener transportation. But there are plenty of rooms for improvement in terms of improving the mechanical property, as well as incorporating the high energy battery chemistry in them. And most important part is the upscaling, upscaling this technology so that we can achieve uh, the successful electrification of the vehicles. Thank you.